Hey everyone, it's Matthew here at Midland Pictures. Today I'm going to go a little bit more in depth into some of the things I'm seeing happen, good and bad, with Final Cut Pro 10.5.3, the update that released last week. Check it out. Save it for conversation. So those of you watching this video most likely are having issues with third-party plugins or you're just generally curious about what's all going on with the Final Cut Pro 10.5.3 update that was released earlier last week. In my previous video, which is linked up above and down in the description, I did an in-depth analysis of all of the updates that were done to Final Cut 10.5.3, including browser enhancements, a way to search for missing media, optimized media, proxy media, etc., as well as a new blade tool. I got a lot of great comments and feedback on this video, especially about the blade tool. Some people like the scissors, some people don't. I personally feel like I'll just get used to it, but right now it feels a little bit awkward to see a pair of scissors instead of that blade tool that I've been so used to for 10 years. And just real quick, before we dive into this slower render time on an Intel computer, if you are not subscribed to this channel and you really love Final Cut Pro and filmmaking content, I'd love it if you click the subscribe button down below join this channel, join this community, and get Final Cut Pro tips, tutorials. So join the channel, click subscribe below and the bell to get notifications. We'd love it if you were here with us. All right, so if you have not upgraded to Final Cut Pro 10.5.3, a couple of things that I recommend. First, open up the Mac App Store and disable automatic updates. You can go to preferences in the upper left, and have automatic updates unchecked. If you have this checked, Final Cut's just gonna update on its own and it may cause some of your third-party plugins to go offline. It's gonna make you update your libraries if you've been working on a current project. And generally, if you're working in Final Cut Pro, whether you're a YouTuber or a professional video editor, it's highly recommended to not have your software automatically update. You wanna make sure you do your due diligence to make sure on social media, support sites, Facebook groups, wherever, that Final Cut Pro updates are running smoothly with third-party plugins and other software that you may be using in your post-production workflow. The next thing that I want you to do is I want you to go to Finder, and then I want you to go to your Applications folder, and then find Final Cut Pro. You can see here that I already have 10.5.3, but let's assume that it's 10.5.2. What you're going to do is right-click and choose Copy, or you can use Command-C. Then you can go to an external hard drive, your desktop, wherever you want to go, and then you can paste that into that window. I already have my Final Cut Pro 10.5.2 pasted to an external hard drive, so if I have any issues with 10.5.3, I can easily roll back to 10.5.2. The third thing that you wanna do is if you go to one of your project files, and I'm just gonna to navigate to one of my YouTube videos here, and I'm gonna to go to my project files here, and your folder system's gonna obviously be different than mine, and let's just say that this is the project I've been working on for this video. What you want to do is you want to right click and then choose duplicate. All right, so that's all copied over. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this with a 1052 tag so I know that this library is compatible with Final Cut 1052. And then if I open this library in the new Final Cut 1053, it's going to prompt me to update this library to be compatible with 10.5.3. But if I have any issues with that library in 10.5.3 or with third-party software that I'm using to do that project, I can always roll back to my 10.5.2 Final Cut Pro as well as my 10.5.2 library. So it's a great way of being able to go back in time to something that was working instead of being in trouble and then we're looking to Facebook groups and Reddit and other forums and videos like mine to try to get help with how to go back to the way things were. Another thing that's a good idea to do anytime you're doing a significant software update, especially if the stakes are high, if upgrading Final Cut Pro could mess up a very important project with an immediate deadline, anything like that, I always recommend creating a Time Machine backup. Time Machine is software that's built into every Mac every Mac OS. I'll put a link in the description below for how to create a Time Machine backup. All you need is an external hard drive with equal or greater capacity than your internal hard drive, and you can essentially duplicate your computer's hard drive to that external drive so that in the process of doing an update, if you have any problems, you can roll back to that Time Machine update and put everything back the way it was. That is a time-consuming process, 
but it is possible to go back in time. That's why they call it time machine. All right, so a few troubleshooting steps if you're running into problems with third-party software. The first thing I want you to do is simply restart your computer. If you haven't restarted your computer in a long time and you performed an update, sometimes just restarting your computer will bring everything back online. Now, if that doesn't work for you, the next thing I would do is check with all of the manufacturers of your third-party software. So if you have Motion VFX, Stupid Raisins plugins, Pixel Film Studios, the Color Finale plugin, Neat Video, these plugins may go offline when you do even an incremental update like this from 10.5.2 to 10.5.3. Everybody should probably take a shot every time I say 10.5.2 or 10.5.3 because I'm saying it a lot in this video. So check the websites for those third-party manufacturers and also check their social media. I usually go to Twitter to see if they've acknowledged the issue and said anything about the fact that they're working on updates. The next thing that I would do is I would actually check with your third-party software if there is an available update that maybe you missed or haven't downloaded yet. Some of these third-party plugins have installation software that's running in the background and you can do your updates that way and it's very easy like Motion VFX. Some require you to go to their website and re-download the new update, install it, possibly uninstall the old plugin and essentially do a fresh install of that software. Now, not all of these manufacturers may be up to date. You may have to wait a few weeks or you may have to wait a while before they issue an update. Keep checking with them on social media and through their support communication on their website. I'm sure they're all working on it to try to get you back up and running. Sometimes even these small third-party software manufacturers get surprised when Apple drops a new update to Final Cut Pro and they have to work to catch up. I'm gonna put a link in the description below to an article that goes over how to troubleshoot Final Cut Pro if it's not working correctly, especially if it's unrelated to third-party software. I think there's 11 or 12 steps that you can follow, including the most serious of steps, which is to clear your preferences for Final Cut Pro or to simply uninstall and reinstall the app. The last thing that you can do if your issue is not related to third-party software, you can contact Apple support at 1-800-MY-APPLE. They have a dedicated team to their professional apps. That's Final Cut Pro, Compressor, and Motion. And that dedicated team, as long as the issue is specific to Mac OS or Final Cut Pro, they can help you troubleshoot that issue. If it ends up being a third-party plugin or third-party software that's offline or not working, they can only do so much to try to get it back up and running. Otherwise, they're gonna refer you to that third-party developer. Now, some of you are here because you've successfully updated, you're not having any issues with your third-party software, and you saw in my title and my thumbnail that Final Cut Pro seems to be slower to render and export with Intel-based Macs. Now that is a big generalization that I'm making based on a very simple set of tests that I did on my 2013 Mac Pro. Just to review, I have a 2013 Mac Pro with a quad-core processor, the D300 graphics cards, and 32 gigabytes of RAM. I have not run this test on any other computers, but I wanna go over the initial findings I've had because I've heard a few things online in forums and on Twitter that people were seeing performance improvements when rendering or exporting videos. Now, I haven't confirmed any of that. It's just stuff that I've been hearing, and I wanted to do my own test to see what was happening on my 2013 Mac Pro. So, in Final Cut, I set up a very simple project. It's one minute, 13 seconds, and 12 frames long. It's a 24 frames per second project. The footage here of me is in 4K from my Canon C300 Mark II. This B-roll here is from my EOS R in 1080 scaled up to 4K. I've got you know, a simple little graphic here, my end cards, a title overlay, and then I have some color grading effects on my angle. There's some basic audio, some music, and some sound effects. So I have some of the test results here on my document. All right, so I opened up Final Cut 10.5.2 and had this timeline unrendered. So you can see here all these little dots across the top that shows that this timeline has not been rendered by Final Cut. So I exported this unrendered to the YouTube preset using faster encode as opposed to better quality and it exported in five minutes and 37 seconds. And this was me just having my iPhone up and using the stopwatch app, so it's not perfectly precise, but it's you know close enough. And then I exported the same timeline unrendered to ProRes 422, and it exported in one minute, 33 seconds. And then I did it unrendered to Final Cut's master file, H.264 setting, and that rendered in five minutes, 37 seconds, so the same as the YouTube preset. So then I switched over to 10.5.3. The library is compatible with 10.5.3. The previous library was compatible with 10.5.2. I did all the same exports and this is what I've got. I got unrendered to YouTube set to faster encode 
at five minutes, 47 seconds. So 10 seconds slower with the new update. Then I did the same thing, unrendered ProRes 422, and that took just a hair under a minute and 34 seconds, cl very close to a minute 35 seconds, which is about two seconds slower uh, for that export. Then I did unrendered H.264, again on the master file settings, and that took five minutes and 53 seconds. So that's 16 seconds slower than what it took in 10.5.2. What I'd love for you, the community to do, for my more advanced users, if you understand the process that I did here to run these tests, having a version of 10.5.2, 10.5.3, everybody take a shot, then do me a favor and create a simple project like this and test the export times for 10.5.2 and 10.5.3 on your Intel-based Mac. For those of you who have M1 computers, I'd love for you to test the difference in export and render times on 10.5.2 and 10.5.3. And let's get our information together on Twitter or in some of the Facebook groups that I'm a member of. I'll link those in the description below. And we can continue a conversation to see if this update has actually slowed things down for Intel-based Macs. Maybe things with M1 computers are the same or better. I think it'll be important to figure out what's actually happening with Final Cut, especially as it pertains to the new wave of M1 computers versus machines like mine that are old Intel-based computers. What's interesting is is for the one render where I where it was 16 seconds slower with the new update, that's just one minute of footage on my timeline. Imagine if you have a 20, 30, 45 hour long video that you're exporting, what are we gonna see with how much slower it is on an Intel based Mac? Are we talking about two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes for some of the longest videos that we're all working on? Not all of us are updating to the M1 computers immediately. Me, for example, I'm holding out for an M1 or M1X Mac Pro or Mac Pro Mini, but that could be a year to two years before I'm ready to purchase it. So in the meantime, if Final Cut Pro, as it gets updated, is actually getting slower on Intel-based Macs, that's gonna be a big problem. Does Apple know about this? Is this by design? It's interesting to think that an upgrade to a piece of software that we've all been using for 10 years, happy anniversary, by the way, Final Cut Pro, would actually get slower for some Intel-based Macs. But again, this information is very preliminary. I encourage all of you out there in the community to take a look at this using your Intel-based Mac. And if you feel comfortable running a test like I did, I'd love to hear your results. If you like this video, I'd greatly appreciate it if you click the like button below. It's the best thing that you can do to support the channel. And again, if you're not subscribed to the channel and you love Final Cut Pro content as well as filmmaking content, I encourage you to click the subscribe button below and the bell so you get notifications every time I upload a video. Thank you so much to everyone who's been tuning into my Final Cut Pro updates. We've seen a lot of new subscribers to the channel and I thank all of you for joining me. It's great to have you here as we all try to improve our post-production workflows and working with Final Cut Pro. I think that's gonna do it for this one. Until the next video, everyone, I will see you soon.